It's a very solemn statement about Ellen G. White. And it, it tells us what's about to hit us. And we need to know what this is because it happens that once this hits, you need to understand how to defend yourself. How to react, I should say, better. Here we go. Let me tell you the background for what I'm about to read to you. Ellen G. White used to go on walks near Loma Linda with her friends and family. And this statement is something she told them, and it was corroborated by her grandson, granddaughter's husband, Elder Robinson. And as soon as he confirmed it, one of the brothers wrote it down, and I'm going to tell us about this, and he said, we need to know about this. So this is not written by Ellen G. White. It was written by friends of Ellen G. White that once they verified everybody was in agreement, they decided to write it down for us to know what she said. Okay, I'm going to read it to you. A statement by Ellen G. White written by Elmer M. Johnson. Brother Will Ross, now deceased, was a personal friend of mine for about 45 years. In our church fellowship, we often spent Sabbath afternoons discussing the experience in the message and his conversion conversations with Mrs. Ellen G. White. About 1908, while living in Loma Linda near Sister White, he frequently accompanied her in her walks and would discuss the message and the future events. On one of those occasions, while waiting at the railroad depot in company with Sister McInterfer and Elder D.R. Robinson, her granddaughter's husband, Sister White related to the three of them about the storm of persecution that was about to burst upon Seventh-day Adventist. Brother Will Ross related to me as follows. This is in quotes. Sister White told us, as we three stood upon the plat depot platform, that the terrible storm of persecution was coming like a windstorm that blew down every standing object. There was not a Seventh-day Adventist to be seen. They, like the disciples, forsook Christ and fled. All who had sought positions were never seen again. After the storm, there was a calm. Then the Adventists arose like a great flock of sheep, but there were no shepherds. It's kind of scary for me, huh? <laughs> I'm a shepherd. There weren't any shepherds. They all waited in earnest prayer for help and wisdom, and the Lord showed them, answered by helping them to choose leaders from among themselves who had never sought positions before. They prayed earnestly for the Holy Spirit, which was poured out upon them, making them fully ready for service. That's the letter rain. They went forth fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners to give the message to the world. I was astonished and asked if that applied to Loma Linda as we were looking in that direction. But Sister White replied to my question that it applied to the entire denominational world. I could not ask. I was so stunned I could not ask any more questions. In 1943, Elder W.D.R. Robinson was visiting the churches in Colorado. I was serving on a platform for Sabbath school, and Elder Robinson visited the Boulder Church, having with him the large Bible that Sister White had held in her hand during the vision. At the close of the service, Brother Ross spoke with Elder Robinson, and, and when he and Sister McInterfer and Sister White were standing on a depot platform together, and Sister White related about the terrible storm, Elder Robinson said, Yes, Elder Ross, I remember that statement. So... I wrote down and documented this reply on January 6, 1946, not wishing to forget this important narration by Brother Ross. I have frequently discussed it with him later, in latter years, and his statement has never varied. What is about to happen is that like a sudden storm, persecution will hit the church. Everybody runs for hiding. And those that appear afterward, very different group than those we have today. After the calm comes, people start popping their heads out and saying, where, where is everybody? Where is everybody? You know what? It will be a very sad day. Most people will have left the church forever, including the shepherds. If you're a leader in your church, be humble. Do not look for a position. Just serve wherever you're asked to serve. If you're a pastor, an administrator, serve where you're asked to serve. Do not seek to climb the ladder. Just be humble and serve God wherever He sends you. Be it high, 
be it low. I believe Pastor Ted Wilson is serving where God has asked him to serve. And I am grateful for his influence on the church. Amen. Very grateful. I pray for him every day. I mean, please ask you to pray for him. He's in a very difficult position because he's surrounded by people that have been going a different direction for a long time. And it's not easy to turn a ship around, especially after so long, and especially after it's already taken a lot of directions, and there are things happening that he recommends not to happen, it still happens, in spite of him. Um, the Spectrum magazine is one of the greatest attackers against standard Adventist beliefs. And the incoming, incoming meditation and the spiritualism and, and all those things that... Uh, Pardon me? Spiritual formation. Spiritual formation. Those kind of things are everywhere. Even, it's almost unperceivable. In South America, we had some things come through that was filled with it. And when we pointed it out to the union, they said, well, but the division sent it. And we went to the division. What? Excuse me, why is this coming in here? We showed them, you're quoting people that are, one of them is a homosexual, one is a spiritist, one is things, and you're quoting these guys and feeding us to our members these things. And they said, sorry. And they pulled it off. Was it, how did it get in there to begin with? It's subtle. Some people who even love the Lord and are loyal don't even realize what it is. So you can see how we're under attack today at every level. Even those that love the Lord, sometimes unperceived, except teaching that is really from the enemy. So we need to pray like we've never prayed before, so that the very elect will not be deceived. But this is a war. And I can tell you who wins. The Lamb wins. I and I am optimistic that the best days of the church are straight ahead. But they're painful days. They're going to be preceded by much training in pain and a terrible cleaning of house. And then, after the house is cleaned, the Holy Spirit will be poured out and the church will go forth as a mighty army to finish the work. The main thing is, are you still going to be there after the storm? That's the question. 